everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how we can install KubeSphere on an existing Kubernetes cluster. As KubeSphere features a highly pluggable architecture, basically it can be installed on Kubernetes regardless of where your cluster is deployed. Well, major Kubernetes engines such as GKE, AKS, or EKS all support the installation of KubeSphere. In today's demo, my Kubernetes cluster is deployed on a Google Cloud instance, but not on GKE. Well, I just created a single node Kubernetes cluster using kubekey. For those of you who are not familiar with kubekey, you can take a look at uh, the kubekey GitHub and some of our technology blocks. KubeKey is a very efficient tool to install Kubernetes only or install both Kubernetes and KubeSphere. Well, now let's get back to today's topic, which is how to install KubeSphere on an existing Kubernetes cluster. So just like I said, uh, my Kubernetes cluster is deployed on a Google Cloud instance. First, let's take a look at the prerequisites. We need to check the Kubernetes version first. You can see the version is 1.17.9. And we need to check our resources. Obviously, I have enough resources uh, in my current Kubernetes cluster. And next is about the storage class. As you can see, I use OpenEBS to provide uh, local volumes. So now I have my Kubernetes cluster ready. I can begin to install KubeSphere. The installation is very simple. You only need to run uh, these commands and the installation will start automatically. So uh, copy it. You can use this command to check the logs of installation. When the installation finishes, you can see the message like this. It means the installation is successful. Now we can check our pods to see if all the pods are running uh, normally. As you can see, all of our namespaces are ready now and we can access the web console of KubeSphere So let's have a look uh, at its port. So the port number is 30880. We can use no port to access the web console of KubeSphere. And as I installed uh, my Kubernetes cluster on GCP, I need to create a firewall rule to allow traffic to this port. For demonstration purposes, I've already created uh, a rule to allow all the traffic. So I don't need to do this again. If you haven't created a firewall rule, you can just click create firewall rule. And now I can just use um, this external IP address plus the port number to access the web console of KubeSphere. And that's the default account and the password. And now we have logged into the web console. On the cluster management page, we can check the status of our node. I only have one node, like I said, and it's running normally. And we have different components. Everything looks fine. And if you want to 
enable pluggable components of KubeSphere, such as DevOps or App Store, you can just enable them directly uh, on the web console. So go to CRDs and search cluster configuration. We can add it a KS installer. Uh, as you can see, um, some of our components, the value of them, they are false. We can change it to true to, ena to enable these uh, components. For example, App Store, which is um, powered by OpenPatrix, can be enabled like this. So change it to true and click update. Wait for a while and refresh the page. You can see the tab open Pitrix appear when the app store is installed successfully. So that's open Pitrix and we can go to the app store. In the app store of KubeSphere, there are a total of 15 built-in apps for you to use. If you want, you can enable other pluggable components in the same way. That will be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.